Okay, so what we're going to do is um, try and derive the closed loop transfer function for a type 0 negative feedback closed loop system. So what we have uh, is an input voltage, which then gets fed to a comparator, which then gets fed to some form of amplification, A, which then goes to an output voltage. And between, just before the output voltage, we have a negative feedback path, um, which, um, which gets amplified by a factor of 1 over k. I'll explain that in a second. And then that goes back to the comparator over here. And over here we have an error voltage. VE goes into A. OK. So what we have is uh, an input voltage. And we have a comparator stage which compares the input voltage in this path to the voltage in this path. We'll try and understand what's going on in this path in a second. And then we end up with an error voltage, which is the difference between the input voltage and the voltage in the negative feedback path. Then we have an amplification, a gain of A, and we end up with an output voltage over here. Now, what we can say is that the output voltage here is simply going to be the uh, error voltage multiplied by this gain over here. Don't worry about understanding exactly what this error voltage is just yet. But we can see that the output voltage is just going to be a product of the error voltage and the gain over here. In fact, we can say that that's going to be true along this entire path over here. So once the error voltage is multiplied by the gain over here, this open loop gain, over here, 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 we can say that this is going to be equal to the output, or VEA. Yeah? So we can say that the output voltage, V out, equals uh, VE times A. Okay? And this output voltage is going to be fed back into this negative feedback path. And the reason it's going to be doing this is because we want to try and establish how, the, how close the actual output voltage is to our desired or our reference input voltage. So let's say this was a car and we wanted to generate, uh, let's say, 100 volts um, to, the, to the acceleration. Um, and the, uh, the output voltage isn't quite there yet. Okay, or if this was a speed, let's say 100, or say 60 miles an hour is our input, and uh, we're only at 30 miles an hour. What's going to happen is that we want to find a way of determining uh, what the actual speed is. And it doesn't have to be the actual speed. So let's say it was 30 miles an hour, uh, but the way that the electronic system works is such that it only gives a proportionate response. So that's okay, because that's taken into account by this proportionate system, this measure, 1 over k. So what we can say is that this negative path is going to be, uh, is going to multiply whatever this output voltage is by 1 over k. So we can say that the, um, the error voltage, which is going to be the difference between the input voltage and the voltage along this path, is going to simply be uh, the input voltage, V in, minus what's going to be on this path, which is V out on K, like that. So we've got the output voltage coming along this path, divided by K. So over here, for instance, we're going we're gonna to have V out on K. Here we're going to have V out on K, etc, etc. So the comparator is going to compare the input voltage, V in, to V out on K. So we end up with an error voltage, which is going to be V in, minus V out on K. All right? And then that is going to be amplified by the gain over here to produce the actual output voltage. So we can now make a substitution and say that the output voltage is the error voltage, which is just the input voltage, minus the output voltage on K, multiplied by A. And if we want to work out the transfer function, which is just the output voltage to the input voltage, the ratio, we can just expand this and rearrange. For V out equals V in A, 
minus V out A on K. So we can say that V out plus V out A on K equals V in A. We can say 1 plus A on K equals uh, V in A. Therefore, V out on V in, i.e. the uh, transfer function, is going to be equal simply to A on 1 plus A on K. Now, if we multiply the top and bottom by K, and you'll see why we do this in a second, we can say that uh, V out on V in is going to be uh, AK on uh, K plus A. And we can see from here that if A is much larger than K, we can say that uh, V out on V in is approximately going to be equal to AK on A. So the A's cancel and that's approximately going to be equal to K when A is much larger than K. And A represents the open loop gain, K represents the closed loop gain. Um, to show the open loop gain fixed at 1000 uh, and K varying from 1 to 10. And we just flip the vector around so it's actually going from 10 to 1. Uh, and the, uh, the, the transfer function over here uh, as k uh, changes. Um, so what you can see over here is that, um, and sorry, I've, I've also actually plotted um, a, a straight line um, which shows um, what, what it should be. Um, so for instance, for, for, for k increasing linearly with the transfer function. So what you can see is that um, they're pretty much the same. Um, when k goes from uh, 1 to uh, 10, um, it, it pretty much corresponds to the actual transfer function, meaning that the transfer function, the, um, the gain, the actual absolute gain, is equal to k, uh, for k being between 1 and 10. But if we, um, say, change uh, k from 1 to 100, what we can start to see is that as k increases, um, and gets actually a lot closer to the um, value of the open loop gain, we're starting to get an error here. The blue line represents the transfer function. The red line represents um, a zero steady state error, um, which is k equals h. That's what the red line represents, k equals h. The blue line represents the transfer function. Now, if we increase it to, say, uh, when k goes from 1 to 500, we can start to see a much larger error. And the steady state error is the difference between the horizontal displacement of these two lines. So again, when k is much, much smaller than 1,000, much smaller than the a, the open loop gain, the, the error is very, very small. As k approaches the open loop gain, uh, I mean, here it's only 500, you can see that error becoming much, much more significant. Um, and, uh, and, and that's the, the steady state error of a type zero negative feedback control loop, um, which results from only having a proportionate gain control of one over K. When we start to look at an integrator, so a PI system, we should see this error actually become zero, um, as we'll see shortly. So what I'm going to do now is look at um, an elementary uh, understanding of Laplace transforms, which are necessary for the integral gain controller. Um, again, we don't need to understand too much here, but um, basically, if we have something like a df by dt um, as a differential uh, equation, we can say that this uh, corresponds in Laplace to S, capital F, of s minus small f evaluated at zero. So if we have something like um, dx by dt uh, plus 2x equals zero, in Laplace this is going to transform to s, small s, Laplace operator, capital X of s 
minus small x evaluated at 0 plus 2 capital X of s, but without the s multiplication. So whenever you have a differential operator dx by dt, in Laplace it's going to be the small s operator multiplied by capital X of s. Um, and for something uh, as, as an integral, um, say x of t, um, that's going to correspond to 1 over s x of s, um, just like that. Um, so again, we don't need to understand this too much um, to, to, really under, to, to really move forward. Now, um, where this comes into play is that if we have, say, a low-pass filter, um, let's just do that for clarification. So we have a resistor here, we have a capacitor, uh, and we have an input voltage over here, uh, and an output voltage over here. So uh, if we were to normally just derive the transfer function um, as a z out on z in, we have the potential divider and the um, impedance uh, of the resistor is just going to be r. The impedance of the capacitor is going to be 1 over j uh, omega c. So we can say that the output to the input uh, impedance is just going to be 1 over j omega c over 1 over j omega c plus r. Yeah, that's just a standard um, standard way that we can uh, we can work out what the um, transfer function is here. And what we'd normally do is just multiply everything by 1 over j omega c. Um, so we end up with um, 1 over uh, 1 plus j omega r c as our standard transfer function for a low-pass filter, which is going to look something like that. Um, but instead of that, what we can do is, um, is something else. What we can say is that if we want to have a look at the, um, say, the cutoff frequency, the, um, the 1 on root 2, 3 dB cutoff frequency, which is defined um, as the transfer function, um, decreases by a factor of 1 over root 2. So if this is the original, uh, let's say the, the original response, so the input to output voltage is 1, which is maximum, and then eventually is going to tend to 0 over here. At some point, at 1 over root 2 of its value, 0.707, I think, um, that's going to correspond to a 3 decibel drop, um, if this is the 0 decibel mark. This is going to be the minus 3 dB point. Okay, one over root two of its of its of its value. So to determine that, just just again uh, from first principles, we can work out what the magnitude of the transfer function is, and set that to one over root two, which is very easy over here. We can do the magnitude of the numerator over the magnitude of the denominator over here. We get h um, in terms of j omega like that. So what we can say is that that's going to be equal to 1 squared root of 1 squared over uh, 1 squared plus omega rc squared, uh, or rooted like this, which equals uh, 1 over um, square root of 1 plus omega rc squared. Um, and remember, we want to know what that value is at 1 over root 2, which is the 3 dB cutoff point. So we can now say that this is going to equal 1 plus omega rc squared equals 1 on 2. If we rearrange this, we can say uh, very simply that 2 equals 1 plus omega rc squared. 2 minus 1 is 1 equals omega rc squared. We can take the root of both sides, we just end up with 1 equals omega rc. And then, um, again, we're looking for the uh, 3 dB cutoff point to find at omega naught. So we can say that omega naught equals 1 over rc. Okay, so coming back uh, to here, uh, what we can say um, over here is um, we, we want to get this defined in terms of omega naught the 3 dB cutoff point, um, or what 1 over RC, in, in other words. So 
if we uh, multiply this by 1 over RC over 1 over RC, we haven't changed anything. And we can say that this is going to be 1 over RC all over 1 over RC plus J omega RC on RC. We haven't changed anything. So that's going to be equal to 1 over RC over 1 over RC plus the R's going to cancel, the C's going to cancel. This is going to be equal to J omega. Okay? And we know that 1 over RC is omega naught. So we can say that this is equal to omega naught over omega naught plus J omega. Okay? And that's going to be the um, that's going to be the transfer function in terms of j omega. Since we know that uh, in Laplace operation the s can usually be replaced with uh, with j omega, we can say that h, the transfer function in Laplace form, is going to be equal to omega naught on omega naught plus s because s can be replaced with j omega. And that is the closed-loop transfer function of a low-pass filter in Laplace notation. Now, the reason why we looked at the Laplace um, notation for a standard low-pass filter was because we want to really derive a standard formula that describes the transfer function of a normal negative feedback closed-loop control system in terms of Laplace operators. So a standard method that is used is in the forward gain path, we use something called G of S. G of S is just whatever is in the forward loop, in, in the forward gain uh, path. And the negative gain path is always defined as H of S. We have our V out, we have our standard error. And now this is all in terms of Laplace now, which is nice because it means we can model the transient as well as the steady state response because Remember what we said is S can be replaced with J omega. So um, if we look now, uh, very similar to what we did before, the output voltage in terms of Laplace is just going to be um, the VE, the error voltage, again with the Laplace operator, times the forward gain path in terms of Laplace, which is VE of S, G of S. We also know that the, um, what's going to be coming over here, the, the, the error voltage, VE, uh, in terms of S again, is going to be equal to the input voltage of S minus whatever is happening in this negative control loop, which is just going to be the output voltage over here times H of S. V out of S times H of S. Okay? we can now substitute this error voltage into here. Very similar to how we did it before. In fact, exactly the same as we did it before. V out of S equals the error voltage, V in of S minus V out of S, H of S, all times by G of S. So if we expand this, we end up with uh, V in of S minus V out of S, H of S, G of S. Um, sorry, that should be multiplied by G of S as well. Whoops. Yeah, so V in of S times G of S um, minus V out of S, H of S, G of S for V out of S. So now let's take the um, try and derive the transfer function again. So we do the V out of S plus V out of S, just taking this to the other side, H of S, G of S, equals V in of S, G of S. Let's take out the V out of S. We have 1 plus H of S, G of S, equals V in of S, G of S. And now we can say that V out of S on V in of S is going to be equal to G of S 
on 1 plus h of s g of s. And that is um, very important. That's the closed loop transfer function for a negative feedback control in terms of Laplace operators. So we can now try to have a look at an integral, a proportional integral control system, um, which is simply uh, really exactly the same type of control that was before, except we have an integrator. So we have, um, we, we know that um, from a standard integrator circuit, we know that the output voltage, um, sorry, that's not in terms of Laplace, in terms of a normal um, output voltage, is going to be equal to minus 1 over RC uh, times the integral of the input voltage as a function of time dt. That we know from a normal integrator circuit. And this is the thing that we're going to be putting in the forward path of the control loop. So in Laplace, first of all, let's convert this to Laplace which is going to allow us to use the um, standard closed loop transfer function that was derived before. Remember that we said that was um, g of s over 1 plus h of s g of s. So what we can do is say that the output voltage, Laplace operator, equals minus 1 over rc. And for an integrator, to convert to Laplace is just going to be times 1 over s, v in of s. Okay? 1 over s, v in of s. If it was a differential uh, v, in by dt, uh, v in by dt, so if it was v in by dt, something like that, dv in by dt, then in Laplace, um, say as a function of time, that would be um, s v n of s. But since it's an integrator, it's 1 over s v n of s. So it's actually quite simple to convert. Like that. We have an integrator here, so it's just going to be 1 over s v n of s. So we can say that uh, v out of s equals minus 1 over s rc v in of s. So therefore, the transfer function in terms of Laplace is going to be v out s over v in of s equals minus 1 over s rc. So that's going to be the transfer function of the integrator. Um, now remember, we also have the gain as well. Uh, the open loop gain, which is A, in the forward path. Um, and what we do is that we actually make that gain negative so that when we multiply them together, we get a positive forward gain. So in the forward direction, which is G of S, we can say that G of S is going to be equal to uh, minus A times minus 1 over S RC. Therefore, g of s equals a over s r c. So we now we have g of s. We now need to find h of s. So we actually know h of s is actually quite easy. Um, it seems a bit a little bit difficult because I haven't actually drawn this out. But um, if we had the um, say the normal input voltage like this. We have the comparator like that. Um, we have the, the error voltage over here. This will be G of S, V out. That'll be H of S. That'll be going like this. So we've got G of S in the forward path, which will be the normal gain, which will be made up of like a normal gain uh, just the open loop gains we had before. And then we have just the integrator circuit, um, whatever that looks like. can't even remember now, some, whatever it is. Um, but the point is, is that the gain of that is going to be 1 over SRC. 
and multiply that by the um, by the forward loop by the open loop gain of a or minus a over here, then we end up with g of s, the forward path, which is basically everything in this forward path over here, um, represented by g of s, and that's going to be a over s r c. Over here, h of s is simply just going to be one over k, which is the proportionate uh, gain control. So we can say that h of s equals one over k. So now we can apply this to the standardized closed loop negative feedback control path in Laplace. So we can get the actual um, transfer function of V out on V in uh, like that to be uh, G of S, uh, which is just um, A over S R C all over one plus H of S G of S, which is just going to be um, a over S R C K. And it's as simple as that. Okay, so to rearrange that, what we want to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the uh, Laplace operator, S over S. So we're not changing anything. And that will give us um, A over, whoops, A over R C over S plus um, a over R C K. So this is starting to look like something we've seen before. Starting to look a little bit like a low pass filter. Um, and then if we, uh, let's say, take out the K, We can say that A over R C K over S plus A over R C K is now looking very much like a low pass filter, where um, if we define omega naught, the cutoff frequency, to be A over R C K, we can say that the transfer function H of S is going to be equal to, uh, and h of s is not the same as h of s over here, this is a bit confusing. It's not the negative feedback path. h of s I'm defining as the actual transfer function of the entire loop is going to be um, omega naught over s plus omega naught times k. And we know that uh, in Laplace, s can equal j omega. So we can say that h of uh, j omega is going to be equal to k omega naught on uh, j omega plus omega naught. And that is the final uh, closed loop transfer function for an integrator with proportionate control. So that's for PI. And what we can see is that um, there's something very, uh, very interesting, which is that um, if we imagine the uh, frequency here being increased, getting larger and larger and larger, eventually what's going to happen is that this is going to get really large compared to that. Um, and uh, there's going to be an impedance here. So we can say that uh, when this gets really, really large, the frequency gets really, really large, um, the response, the transfer function is going to be very small. When this is zero, when the frequency is zero, the transfer function is going to be k omega naught on omega naught, which is going to be k. So it's going to be k if we draw the frequency response. We're going to end up with something looking like this. Oh, it's a little bit badly drawn, but we're going to end up with a low pass filter response. But the point is, is that at DC, um, when omega equals zero, h of s is going to equal k omega naught on omega naught, i.e. k. And it makes no difference what the value of k is. Um, in the proportionate system that we saw before, we saw an error between, um, on MATLAB, 
uh, between what the, um, if, if this was k, as k was increasing, and the transfer function, h of s over here, this is what it should be. Um, if you increase k, it should be h, h of s. But when k actually started to approach um, a value close to the open loop gain, this started to happen. Yeah, we ended up with a uh, an error that was um, like this, and the error was getting larger and larger as k got bigger and bigger. Now what we're seeing is a transfer function, which is very different, which means that whatever the value of k is, k can be very, very large and get really, really large, as large as you want it to be, and that k will always equal h of s, providing, um, providing the frequency is zero. So we now end up with something where we have k is increasing, we have the transfer function h of j omega or h of s, and the response is perfectly linear. It's perfectly in line. So whatever you can pick any value of k, and that um, and that will actually equal the transfer function in the steady state response.